So when it comes to making these rain world videos, I usually like to do two runs, right? A normal run where I just play through the character and I gather clips, you know, funny clips from that. And then some sort of a challenge run, right? To make that character really shine. And for Spearmaster, I struggled quite a lot because where do you really use that many spears, right? But then I got an idea. And uh, as you can tell from the title, it's one hell of an idea. So, what are the rules? Well, that's actually pretty simple. You just can't throw any spear. So this includes all variations of spears, meaning no normal spears, red spears, electric spears, uh, those weird spears and spoilers. And, of course, no needles that the spear master creates. Obviously, this means you can't eat, and uh, not being able to eat means not being able to gain food, means not being able to rest, which, um, well, is a big problem, isn't it? Let's start by going over what we have. The main gimmick of the Spearmaster is that he can only eat if he hits living enemies with the spears he can infinitely create. And for his campaign, all he really has to do is go to Pebbles, go to Moon, and then go to Communications Array. Now if we had some karma, this wouldn't be too much of an issue. But Spearmaster has Karma 1, and all the gates in the outskirts are at least Karma 3. So, is that it? Did I clickbait you with this concept to get easy views? Well, yes, but I wasn't going to give up that easily. There is one unexpected mechanic that can actually help us here. Passages. See, when passages are used, they actually give you back all of your karma. Meaning, if we manage to get one, we'd get karma 5. So, which passages can we get? Let's start by cutting out the ones that require you to survive multiple cycles, since, well, we only have one cycle. And that's most of them. Great. We're left with Chieftain, Outlaw, and Dragonslayer. Chieftain is actually impossible, because in one cycle you can only gain 50 rep. And to get Chieftain, you need 80 rep. Okay, so what about Dragonslayer? Well, it's also impossible. To get it, we would need 6 colored lizards, and we only have 5 in outskirts, so not gonna happen. Thankfully, we still have one more, Outlaw, and it's impossible as well. See, in order to get these passages so early, we'd need to enable a remix option which allows you to get passages before Survivor. Or so it says, some of them still can't be gained before Survivor, and one of them is Outlaw, meaning that's impossible as well. But guys, don't click off the video yet, please. I still have another idea. Out of bounds. See, if you go through a pipe at the same time as a lizard, there's a small chance that you will get pushed not out of the pipe, but into a wall and go out of bounds. The usefulness of this is that if we manage to go out of bounds, we could actually go around the gate and trigger the other side of it, which would also load the next region, just using a different karma requirement. I mean, this is amazing. All we have to do now is just get a lizard and it doesn't work as well because all the gates and outskirts have karma to minimum for all of the other sides of the shelters. And uh, even if we managed to do it, we'd need uh, two spears to get out of bounds consistently. So, um, there's no way to leave outskirts. Um, well, not necessarily. See, there's actually a very simple way to beat Spearmaster without ever using a single spear. Yeah, I obviously understand that this is, well, quite boring, but in reality, as far as I'm aware, this is the only way to beat this challenge. And all that would be left for you to do is to enable the rain timer to its max value and walk around, go to pebbles, moon, and you're done. But, come on, you want an interesting video, right? 
If you want me to like show you cool tech, niche things, make an ultra difficult run that still manages to use like no spears essentially, right? I can do that. But we're gonna have to change the challenge because if zero spears is important, well, just how low we can truly go. No use of these cheats, just some good old theory crafting, all right? Let's begin. Let's start by actually taking a look at where we start, because the next screen is rather interesting. This screen actually intends for you to use spears, because you can't do a charge bounce or a jump to go across these gaps, so you'll inevitably fail and pin a spear into the wall to climb up. Crucially, there's also this little block, which disables a lot of tech, so was I dumb to even question the entire run before I got through here? Well, no, obviously not. Have you seen the tech in this game? We have three methods in crossing these gaps. The first and easiest method is to just find some rock, and then use it to throw boost over these gaps. But I'd rather not just restart the run over and over again until I got two rocks, because it's kinda rare. The second method is actually by doing a backflip. But Rock, I thought we couldn't do a backflip. I said we couldn't do normal backflips, but we can do turn stored backflips. The way that backflips work is that while you run, a value increases, and once it reaches a certain point, if you then turn around and jump, you do a backflip. While this value does get reduced if you slow down or stop running, it does not get reduced if you are midair. So, if you run, jump, go around and repeat, you will keep increasing this value with each jump, albeit slowly, until you have enough to do a backflip, at which point you do that, do a roll, bounce, and you make it over. So, thankfully, we can go over this part. Oh, the third method? Don't worry about it, it's this, I don't... It's the same principle, but I don't really know how it works, so... We'll leave it alone. Now that we've passed that, there won't be many more movement-related difficulties. Well, I mean, at least for a while. Just like before, our major issue is going to be leaving outskirts. And to do that, we're going to need Karma 3 to go to Industrial Complex. To get 3 Karma, we're gonna need to sleep twice, meaning we're gonna need 2 times 5 food, 10 food. Conveniently, Spearmaster is the only slug cat that can store enough food for two cycles. Meaning all we need to do is get 10 food, sleep twice, and that's it. However, Spearmaster tends to not gain much food from each spear hit, meaning he usually has to hit enemies multiple times, something we can't really afford here. So I did some testing and found that most creatures give just one pip of food per spear hit which is not very good. However, there were two notable exceptions. Egg bugs, which give three, and fruit plants, which give five. So these will be our major food sources. So the most food that we can get in one spear throw is to hit a fruit plant and gain nine food. Some may suggest starvation, and that would get us to karma three, but besides making you incredibly weak, that would also mean that you would have to regain all of that food, which is going to be really difficult, so in general, starvation is not going to be the strategy. But of course, this isn't where I was going to give up. And after some thinking, I got it. The legendary six food spear throw. How is it possible? Well, that's very simple. Out of all the creatures that you can hit, there are a few that don't stop your spear on hit. One of them is bats. Presuming you could set it up, if you had an infinite row of bats, you could throw a spear and gain infinite food. So all we have to do is set up four bats in front of the fruit plant, throw our spear, and kaboom, six food. Now you may see that this is easy. Knock the bats down, place them in the right spot, and boom, six food. And you'd be right that you can do that. However, there is one very small detail. The bats have to be alive. And this makes things uh, much more difficult. Much, much more difficult. Now some may say that this isn't that hard. 
After all, there's a room with bats right next to this room. So let me explain why this may be the most difficult thing to set up in this game maybe ever found. First, bats don't really like living. Hold them for a bit too long and that's it, they give up, <laughs> they just stop moving. Oh, throw them away and pick them right up? Go ahead and try, they're just gonna fly away. However, let's see you can actually bring them to this room. Yep, look at them go. These bats actually prefer their original room, meaning they will leave whenever they can. Even if they don't leave, well, good luck hitting four bats in a row that just randomly fly about. Of course, if that was it, then I wouldn't be sitting here explaining this strategy to you. It'd be essentially impossible. Some of you may have had the right idea, though. What about a bat flower? Great point. How about we go pick one up? That wasn't too hard. Now how about we come back? That's gonna be a bigger issue. But there's actually quite a few ways that people have discovered on how you can get up there. For example, there's creature boosting, where if you grab, jump, throw in sh very short succession, you can actually get a lot of height. The issue is that because we're grabbing something, we can't also hold the bat flower, so that's out of the question. Another solution would be an explosive boost. Now, explosive spears, well, there's a small issue with them, so we're, I, I think you can see what it is. The red flowers don't really give you enough height, plus they knock your item away, and grenades are very hard to down throw without killing yourself. There is also wiggle flight, but I'll assume that 20 frame perfect inputs every second is a bit too difficult for humans, but you never really know with Rainwald players, am I right? Then there's Squidcada flight. If you're starving and holding a Squidcada, if you then backflip, and don't touch any walls, you can actually hold jump for infinite height and if you release you go down, so kind of like some sort of a helicopter we have here. The issue is that we'd have to starve, which would make the rest of the run significantly harder, so it doesn't really work. So after all this, I mean, it really seemed impossible, it seemed like you just couldn't do it. You couldn't get the flower up there and hitting all the bats in a row, I mean, that's just that just wasn't going to happen. It looked like the strategy would just fade away to history, be forgotten for being too unlikely, too difficult, just too stupid to work. But then I tried again. I just, I just couldn't give up. I mean, I was so close. If we could get the flower up there, maybe it would be possible, right? And it would be so, so useful. And then I realized something. I had made a mistake in one of my methods. Now, remember how I talked about Squid Kata flight just seconds ago? Well, I mentioned that you need to be starving. The reason you need to be starving is because you need to be light enough for the Squid Kata to make you fly, and so you have to starve. But we're not actually playing Survivor, Monk, or Hunter, the vanilla characters. We're playing Spearmaster. And apparently, Spearmaster is light enough to fly without having to starve. This is it! All, that's it! All we have to do, find a Squid Kada all the way in outskirts, that's easy. Pick up a flower, but wait, no, 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 you can't hold the flower. You just can't hold the flower, that's it. It, it, it doesn't work as well. Of course not, I'm just joking with you. There's a glitch called Creature Regrab where if you switch hands and pick up a creature at a very precise time, you can hold the creature and an object at the same time, which is perfect for us here. So finally, we're here. We have a flower, we have the bats, we have the fruit plant, and it's still unbelievably difficult. The same issues apply, except that now we have a flower and we can hope that they stay on the flower for long enough for us to bring all of them in. By this point, I don't really have much else to say about the strategy because I tried it, and I failed quite a few times. This is where I have to mention that this video is not about actually doing this run. I'm just here to show you the strats, the tech, and the theoretically best route that I can come up with. I mean, have you seen the first run? <laughs> actually doing this would take so many attempts, so much time and effort. I'm not here for that, alright? I'm just here for thinking about the tech. 
So, instead of slamming my head into the wall over and over and over again, I'll just assume that this is possible and continue talking about the tech, because I don't really see any reason to why this would be impossible. Anyway, now that we have 10 food, we can finally rest. You'll want to make sure you rest somewhere near industrial complex, because that's where we'll be going. And for your second cycle, I mean, you can do whatever you want really, talk with monkeys, maybe hit some lizards with rocks, it doesn't matter too much. Now that we have Karma 3, we can finally reach something other than outskirts, and we can also reach Chimney Canopy. But we are then gated by a Karma 4 gate to the wall. Now, you may be able to get a 10-foot spear here somewhere, but in the end we actually don't really care about that. All we really care about is getting a Grapple Worm, getting Karma 4, and then continuing all the way to Pebbles. However, the top of the wall might pose a bit of an issue. See, this room is a bit infamous for its one-way design, and it's usually a bit difficult to get up there, with the most popular method being to pin some spears into the wall. However, we can't do that for other obvious reasons. You may think that this is where we would use the grapple worm, but we can actually do a crawl turn vault here. But since it's really difficult and I can't do one, we'll just go with the grapple worm. So after all that, we finally reach pebbles. And if we just went in there blindly, he'd take out our pearl, get very angry, and throw us right out. Normally this is fine, because uh, who wants to go to five pebbles, am I right? <laughs> um, yeah, we're, we're going to five pebbles. I'll explain why in a bit, but for now we just need to figure out how to go through the other pipe. The pebble sequence is relatively simple. Essentially, you just drop down in there, he picks you up, stuns you, and now you're exhausted for a while while he reads the pearl. Once you wake up and he finishes reading the pearl, you have some time before he starts throwing you out. It'd be great to get out through the other pipe right now, but that's a bit too difficult, and usually he'll just start throwing you out. However, crucially, you can actually stay in this room if you just refuse to go through the pipe, and after a while, he'll give up on throwing you out. However, 5 to 10 seconds later, he'll just kill you, so this is our window to get out of here. Now the simple plan is to wait for him to give up on throwing you out, and then jump to the left wall, and then jump up. But if you've ever moved in zero gravity, you'll know that this is uh, pretty difficult to do quickly, and he'll probably just kill you. This is why we brought the grapple worm. Before he begins throwing you out, you can actually make it all the way to the ceiling, grapple onto it, and by the time he gives up on throwing you out, the grapple worm will pull you right next to it, meaning you can simply go through the pipe. Yes, this is difficult, but it's no six food spear, and with some practice it's actually doable. Well, this is where we can actually bring back a previous strategy that we used. Remember bats? Well, conveniently, neurons also don't stop your spear. Meaning that, again, theoretically, you can gain infinite food. The issue, however, is the same as bats. How do you hit however many you want? In this case, we would want 20 to get 10 food. Well, unlike bats, when there's gravity, neurons just fall down, and crucially, they don't just give up on living, you can still get the energy from them. There is a very small minor issue though. Five Pebbles only has two rooms with gravity, excluding the ones we can't reach. This means that if you want to get 10 food, you'll have to walk back and forth bringing two neurons per run to this spot, which can take around 3 minutes. In theory, you can then finish this whole mess in 30 minutes there's a little bit more to it than that. The first issue is quickly noticed once we actually start doing the runs. The inspectors. Normally inspectors just float around and do nothing, however if you're holding a new run, they get quite upset. Okay Rock, well you just avoid them, what's the big idea? Well, while not wrong, it is a bit difficult when they start throwing spears at you, as they are one of the few creatures in the game that can do that. To be clear, this is not a major issue, as you can just wait for them to leave, but it's an issue nonetheless. Secondly, once you collect all of those 20 neurons, well, you better hope you hit all of them. 
For whatever reason, if the neurons are too close to each other, the spear will still stop. Meaning you have to neatly arrange all of them for them not to be too dense so that it cleanly goes through all of them. Finally, after all this, you can now throw your third spear and have two more cycles to work with. And after you sleep right next to the underhang gate, well, it's about time to go on a journey. You'll have to go from the middle of underhang to the right side, where you will then use the new gate to the precipice, a uh, sub-region of shoreline. From there, you will cross these hanging towers to go all the way to moon. Once you're there, you will actually regain all of your food and instantly go to Karma 5. Not that you really needed it when you needed Karma 5 to enter this place. However, you may wonder why we even grinded for 10 food when we could just make it to here from underhang. Well, because we had to use a spear hit somewhere, since you wouldn't be able to make it to Pebbles and Moon in the same cycle, it's just worth getting 10 karma and then saving in, for example, the rightmost underhang shelter, just in case you wanted to take it more slowly. Either way, once we reach Moon, the rest of the journey is rather simple. You're probably going to use your first save somewhere in Moon, and then you're gonna save in the middle on your way to Sky Islands, and then lastly, you go to Communications Array, broadcast your message, and you get the dub. The final amount of spears used is three. Well, after seeing this, I was actually a bit disappointed. We really need that legendary six food spear, but the other two aren't that needed, right? I mean, I didn't even think that much about them, I just knew I had essentially zero chance to save on food and I didn't bother looking around for more potential. So after finishing this route, I took a look at the map again and... Oh boy, did I find something. See, once we go to industrial complex, we can go multiple ways. Chimney Canopy, which later on requires Karma 4, Shaded Citadel, which now needs Karma 5, so out of the question, and Garbage Waste, which now needs Karma 3. So if you really didn't want to use a spear to get to the wall, then, well, you could go there. However, instead of crossing Industrial Complex and Chimney Canopy, which is relatively doable, you'd have to run past a small part of Industrial Complex, the entire Garbage Wastes, the entire Shoreline, and the entire Underhand. Now, is this doable? I don't know. I think I'd be able to make it to the middle of Underhang on an okay run, but those cracked movementers that can A-hop? Well, I mean, they could probably get further. Thankfully, after seeing this, I realized something. Moon gives food and karma. Why, why are we even going to Pebbles? So, instead of going to Pebbles, the plan is now going to be to first go to Moon. However, we can't use the more convenient gate at the top since it needs Karma 5. Instead, we'll have to use the lower gate and then climb up through the struts and vents of Moon's superstructure. In my opinion, this is possible. Still, like, really difficult, but probably doable. So, once we talk to Moon, we get our karma, food, and save next to Moon. We'll talk about why we save here later. After that, we can go through the upper gate, and then travel all the way to Pebbles in one cycle. This time we'll go to him through his superstructure, and we won't be needing to go back. However, hold on, why are we going to the top of the wall? Shouldn't we be going back to Moon? Well, if we did, we'd just run out of time. But we can do better by using a passage. Yes, unlike the previous route, this one requires a passage. And that's not only because a passage teleports you, but also because it gives you food. However, some may ask how do we even get a passage. Well, we have some options. Starting off with the unviable but funny ones, you have Friend, where you'd have to sleep with a lizard in your den three times. You could maybe do that for the first two shelters in the outskirts, but after that you'd have to be extremely quick in reaching the wall before it started raining. Also you could bait a white lizard into this shelter for the final cycle. Next is Dragon Slayer, which would struggle less from finding the lizards and more from actually killing them. Remember, we can't use spears, so what, you'll use rocks or something? Try to make them fall off a cliff somewhere? Maybe I'm missing something, but it seems rather unlikely. Lastly, there's Chieftain, which is possible. Considering that you'll likely spend the first cycle working on the legendary spear throw, you could spend a second cycle grinding rep by going past the toll and using the three pearls behind it for rep, 
potentially. Then, after visiting Pebbles, you should be able to make it to the wall quickly enough to see some scavengers, and you could even bring a Pebbles Pearl and the Wall Pearl to them, potentially getting Chieftain. If that's not enough, then, well, while you're running all the way to Moon, you better set aside some time to pick up and give Pearls. And so, after acquiring a passage, we can travel all the way back to where we saved next to Moon, talk to her, and quickly get on our way forward. After saving somewhere in Underhang for time, you will then rest one last time to finally win. Total spears used, one. To summarize, start the run, get the legendary six foot spear throw, grind chieftain, book it to moon, book it to pebbles, passage with chieftain to moon and run to communications array. Almost no room for error, insane luck and skill required, potentially the hardest rainwalled run ever conceived. Of course, I may be wrong somewhere. Maybe it's impossible to get that passage. Maybe it's impossible to make it to moon. I can't prove it without doing the run, and I definitely cannot do the run. However, I do think that just the theoretical part is fascinating, and I had plenty of fun discovering this route. Now that I've had my fun with it, I shall hand it over to the Rainworld community. And whether people will care to develop it further will be quite interesting to see, but I do believe that one day we will see a spear master beaten without any spears. Of course, I could be wrong. But the amount of tech that has been discovered suggests otherwise. Ah, and one more thing. Since literally 99% of my viewers aren't subscribed, well, how about you, you know, scroll down and 